Inflation remains high, but the Reserve Bank appears more optimistic about it reaching the key target zone this year. With us is Deputy Governor Christian Hawksby. So the tone of your statement in February seemed to differ from November. Yeah, I think we're just feeling confident that, that we're on track and we're in a good space. Um, really, the difference between November and, and February has really just been the passage of time and, and the data that's come out um, since um, November. There have been unders and overs. Uh, there's been a lot of data out over that period. But the, the overall story is that our projections, not only from November, but actually further back into last year, are, are broadly panning out as we expected. Um, restrictive monetary policies working. Have you removed that willingness to hike again? No, I, I think that we always keep our you know options open. Uh, what we're saying is that uh, in November we saw some of the risks um, you know to the upside in terms of our central um, inflation uh, projection. Uh, this time around, given that data, they're a little bit more balanced. Um, but also we acknowledge that um, you know there's less room to manoeuvre if there are upside and uh, surprises to inflation relative to downside. So we're still still conscious about that. You know, we're confident that having policy in a restrictive zone, you know, is working and that's doing some of the, you know, the job for us in terms of getting inflation back. Yeah, and what does a sustained period of time mean? How long? Well, it means long enough that we're not thinking about cutting you know, interest rates, you know, at the moment it's not part of the conversation. Mm. Um, and uh, we, we're conscious that we need, uh, you know, demand better matching the supply of the economy, but we're probably going to have to go through a, a period in which is, you know, in our projections of, um, you know, reasonably subdued, moderate cooling, you know, of the economy for for a period. And that's that's really just to ensure that not only do we get inflation, you know, down, but those inflation expectations stay anchored. Uh, as well. Mm. So you're expecting inflation to reach the top end of the, the target band in September, in the September quarter this year? Into the tail end of this year, that's yeah. right. Okay, and, and what's your rationale behind that and, and what could stymie that? Uh, well, it's just, uh, it, it really talks back to those sort of capacity, you know, pressures um, that we've had that period of high inflation, there's been some sort of supply side um, component to that, you know, Restrictions on the supply side of the economy, uh, a very strong uh, demand side. You know that story has changed. Things are feeling better matched. Um, less uh, inflation pressures coming through, and that's really our our route to goal. Less inflation pressures in terms of domestically, internationally, or both. Well, the mix of inflation pressures is changing, and that's probably you know a big part of the story as well. Um, so far, you know. International, those international pressures, the tradables inflation does tend to be more volatile. Mm. You know, it was the first thing that was going up when we went through that high inflation period. It was the first thing to come down again uh, as well. Now we've got this sort of hump of domestic inflation pressures that are still working through um, that sort of home grown inflation, um, things like, uh, you know, council rates, rents, uh, those sort of things. Um, so we do expect that they will be that sort of tail end of, of pressures that, that linger, um, but they will come back to as the as the economy comes on back to a more even keel. Yeah, what weight do you put on international pressures such as the rise in shipping costs? Is, it, is that just a short-term blip or what weight? Uh, it is something that the committee discussed a lot over the course of the deliberations and we and we wrote a lot about it in the record of the meeting. Mm. You know, we're very conscious of those factors. We obviously saw it um, and in a very extreme way through, through COVID and the Ukraine um, period. Uh, here we're just really showing that we've got our eyes open and we're conscious of these things going on. We know why they're going on. Um, at the moment, we see it as something that uh, is reasonably transitory. Um, so, we need to keep focused in that medium term, you know, zone because that's where uh, monetary policy works. If we're if we're reacting against short term things, we're just going to add more, you know, volatility into the mix. Uh, but we'll keep we'll keep a close eye on it. Domestic pressures are they still what you'd call sticky? Well, they they do tend to linger, you know, longer. That's just the sort of way it tends to work. That that home grow and what we call non tradables or domestic inflation, it is does tend to be more slow moving. It does tend to take longer to come back down. So to some extent, that's not 
unexpected. It's just um, you know that kind of uncomfortable period that we have to go through as, as central bankers that we want inflation to come back to target quickly, but kind of know that um, you know part of it is about time. You discussed a potential hike at this meeting, but you had consensus to hold. What was the rationale? What was the debate about a hike? Well, I, th- I think as the governor mentioned in the press conference, th- there was you know that one. They were the two options you know on the table. It was a reasonably uh, you know straightforward um, discussion and, and a reasonably quick consensus around um, staying on hold. And that's partly that story around um, inflation risks being a bit more balanced than they were um, back in November. And so that's taken a little bit of that uh, the heat out of that. Uh, that discussion. Mm. And you're expecting December quarter GDP to be flat, 0%. So that shows that the economy is just trucking along at the bottom of the of the barrel. That's right. I think over the course of the next 12 months or so, um, pretty subdued uh, demand side of the economy. And that's that's really a story about what we've done previously uh, working. And, and we're going to see, you know, see the fruits of that now in terms of that period of pretty subdued um, demand to just take those uh, inflation pressures out of the system. Do you think you could cut uh, even if inflation is still out of the band, i.e. the middle or late this year? Yeah, you know, at the moment uh, we've got cuts in our projections, but yeah. they're, they're out in the future. And yeah. I think, you know, they're, they're there almost mechanically because you know that if you've got policy tight and it's working, at some point you'll have to come back to more neutral settings it's a large degree of uncertainty around when when that will happen. At the moment, it's just sort of not part of the conversation. It's just something that will happen down the track. You know, what will give us the confidence to do that? One will be, you know, seeing inflation uh, more in the band. Actually, the midpoint, you know, is what we're aiming for. And we know that um, we actually need the economy to go through a, a period where it's reasonably subdued uh, for a while, um, and that's because we know that there will be this this wave of domestic inflation that's still lingering, inflation mm. expectations will linger higher just because what people have seen in the past. So we need to you know work that down. How long is a while? How long is a while? Yeah, when you say the economy needs to be subdued for a while, how long is that? Because last year GDP was revised down. There were a couple of negative quarters. Do you need 18 months, two years? Well, in, in our projections, we've got pretty subdued um, GDP over the next 12 months or so. Um, so, you know, that's that's what we're looking at at the moment. And that's really about, you know, how, how subdued does the demand side of the economy need to be to get inflation back down? There'll be other factors, uh, you know, that, that go on in the meantime, which may make that process faster or slower. Yeah. You've got some runs on the board, though. The economy has slowed. Inflation is trickling down slowly. You, you must be pleased that monetary policy is working as desired. That's right. And that was one of the key messages, really, that level of confidence that uh, monetary policy is working. Uh, we, we know that when uh, rates are restrictive, uh, you know, it does have an effect. It does come through. And sometimes it's just a matter of time and a matter of having that confidence. Yeah. Why is the market penciling in cuts from, say, August. What sort of confidence do they have in that, do you think? I I think it's the nature of markets, that markets are always looking ahead. They're always trying to be ahead of the game. They're looking for the the next thing. Um, So as we've had policy in a restrictive zone and we've moved into a sort of a hold, wait, watch, worry and wait, um, zone as we have been for the last few meetings, you know, that naturally just gets the speculation about when is the when is the time to go down? And so, you know, that's been a story not only domestically but internationally uh, as well, um, particularly in the in the in the states. Um, and markets will wax and wane. You know, that that timing will shift around um, as as we see how the economy economy pans out. And what would it take for the Monetary Policy Committee to start talking about cuts this year? I think there's a there's an an aspect of just the passage of time. You know, we've had policy uh, restrictive for a while now. Uh, our projections have been for the last twelve months sort of broadly panning out. Um, you know, it, it, as our central projection has been set out, and so you know, you, you sort of roll forward, and that discussion will you know come closer. 
Uh, but there is still, you know, still work to be done there. We do need to have a, a higher level of confidence that inflation will be well anchored and we will be uh, you know, at that midpoint of our target. Christian Hawksby, thanks for your time. Kia ora. To support our award-winning independent journalism, subscribe to nbr.co.nz.